Thank you. Do you want a biscuit? No, thank you. Just the tea is fine. Mmm. Lovely. Now, Lisa. Normally, for cases of domestic abuse, I prefer to see patients privately in my office or another neutral venue. Not unfamiliar, but somewhere more comfortable for the survivor. The disconnection, albeit temporary but progressive, is necessary to start the healing process. However, you've requested or rather insisted that we have this session here today. Can I ask why? Danny's aim. Um, he's like really jealous. And he like knows my days off her Thursday and Friday. And if I leave this house and I'm not in by the time he gets home. Well, <sighs> It's okay. Take your time. The first stage of domestic abuse is often an element of controlling of the victim, but making them think it's for their own good. Now, am I right in assuming Daniel doesn't like you going out, yet spends most of his time out himself? He's never in. Ever. He expects, like, this house immaculate when he gets home. His tea on the table, his clothes washed and ironed, and... And what? <sighs> My legs open wide when he gets home from the pub, pissed. So the abuse is sexual at times. <laughs> Lisa, I've been reading through your original statement to my colleague, Patricia Benson, and I believe you reported Daniel to the police on more than one occasion, but then later retracted those statements. Listen, I'm not stupid. Nothing that the police would do would be a minute for what he'd do to me. He'd kill me if I grassed him up. The police take incidents of domestic violence very seriously these days, Lisa. Now more so than ever. With increased awareness of mental health and rising suicide rates. Now... It was Patricia who forwarded you on to me because of my experience in dealing with these cases. But not only that, my unique expertise in dealing with them. Domestic abuse is very common, as you well know, but it's not as generic as what people think. Each individual is different. Therefore, each case must be dealt with differently and equally as individually. <clears throat> now this next part is going to be quite difficult for you. But I assure you, it's necessary. And me knowing everything about your case means I can more effectively help you. I want you to list everything that Daniel has done to you or is currently doing to you. However minor, however painful to recollect, but also however long ago. Take your time. He would. I mean, I would. It's 
Just like the slot! It's just... Little things just trigger them off. Stupid things like... If he comes in and there's a crumb on the floor... He just flips. Where's my fucking dinner? He starts saying who's been in here. If you're not going to cook for me, you're going to suck for me. He'd look for footmarks on the floor to see if they're just my footmarks. <laughs> like... It never always used to be like this. He was lovely at first. I don't even know what happened to him to turn into this monster. It's okay. I understand how difficult this is. Take your time. I'm sorry. You said it wasn't always like this. Think back. At what point during your marriage or courting period, if it was before marriage, did this kind of abuse, this kind of treatment start? <gasps> oh my God. That's him. You're going to have to go. Stay calm. You'd have to leave. You'd have to leave now. What the fuck is going on in here? It's not what you think. It's not what you, you think. Shut your mouth before I shut it for you. And who the fuck are you? Is this what you get up to while I'm No, out? babe, no, no. No, no, it's not. Ah! Babe, no, please don't. Sit there. <laughs> Calm down. Who the fuck are you? My name is Dr. John Harrison, and I'm a counsellor for the- Shut the fuck up for us! I fail to see how insulting my impaired vision is going to help things. Are you trying to be clever with me? As well as fuck my wife, you specky cunt. I assure you, the purpose of my visit here is to help your wife. But now that you're both here, why don't we all calmly sit down and discuss the matter? Help her? How? By poking her? Calm down. By fucking her? Hey! She's beautiful. Yeah, you're beautiful. Tell her she makes lovely tea. You make lovely tea. Now I'm going to remove this pen shortly. And when I do, you're going to pinch the top of your nose with your left hand and place your cupped right hand underneath it. And if you spill one single solitary drop of blood on this lovely tiled floor, that I'm sure Lisa worked very hard to keep clean. Then I'm going to go into my pencil case. I'm going to move from my pen to my sharpie. 
then to my highlighter, then my bingo marker. I'll put so much stationery up your nose, the next time you blow it, you'll win a fucking Turner prize. Then I'll move to my toolbox. You understand me, Danny boy? Oh, yeah, yeah. How about one of those biscuits? Fancy man. You're just paranoid, Mark. Call me paranoid again. Call me fucking paranoid again, and I swear to God. What are you looking at? Fuck you, one. Look that fucking way. Come on, drink up. You got me vodka. You, you know I can't drink vodka. You don't drink that fucking lot. I you to drink. No problem getting steam in throat other lads, have you? Now you can get on it for me. Now fucking drink it. Good evening. Fuck you. Well, I was supposed to be meeting someone here, but it seems I've been stood up. So I was wondering if you'd like a friendly game of pool. Very good. <laughs> Not really, but I enjoy it all the same. Are you okay, miss? She's fine. She's under the weather. That time of year, isn't it? So you enjoy the game? That's to make your things a little bit more interesting. Do you? What the fuck you ask if I didn't? Okay. Lead the way. Drink up. Cool. What's your name, miss? Claire. Claire, my name is John. Will you do me a favour? Will you look after these? I 
win this. We're playing a what? This will only take a minute. So you're going to be able to see Cube all the way out your specs. Do you fear? It's perfect. Do you want to break? I'd love to.